Welcome to Pop Turnative, where we dive into topical discussions from the worlds of pop culture, social media, and sports. Here is your host, Peter Romoliotis, aka PD Beats. PD Beats here from Pop Turn, speaking to you, Jesse Reynolds, about the film Obsessed to Death, starring Holland Roden, which is going to be available, which is available on Tubi. Welcome to the show, man. It's so good to see you. Oh, Petey, thanks for having me. It's been years I've been wanting to do this. I didn't know all I had to do was get in a thriller movie. <laughs> yeah, I know. It's pretty crazy. Well, I always found that interesting. I mean, you you like, you know, you you work in radio, you do stand-up comedy, you're acting in this. Did you know what was all going to kind of happen? You were going to do a bunch of different storytelling or did it kind of just happen? You know, that's uh, inter- and it's funny. Everything happens at once. This has been a crazy good year for when me. When it rains, it pours. It's so true. It's so true. But... <laughs> I, to, this is going to sound cheesy, Petey, but I've always sort of thought of myself as an actor. That's what I'm trained in. That's what yeah. I went to school for. So when I have all these other storytelling roles, I think of it as just being an actor, playing a comedian or playing a radio host or playing whatever I'm doing. Yeah, absolutely. The movie's out of control. I, oh, well, yeah. I, I don't want, like, well, we get into certain things, but I love, like, I want audiences going in fresh with a lot of films. You know what I mean? So, like, the tra- Tubi just dropped the trailer for it. It's available on their platforms. Um, what's it like, though, working on kind of a thriller movie w- in a time where, like, the genre is pretty massive right now? Like, thriller and horror is, like, arguably one of the biggest genres right now, Jesse. Oh, yeah. And, you know, just to mention the trailer, which is like, I've watched it a hundred times. I'm in love with it. It's so good. But like, to your point, they give a lot away in the trailer. Like, like they kind of even give away who the killer is. And usually they don't do that. But I found with this one, it still makes you want to watch it. Well, you've been in, you're in media as well. So you get screeners sometimes. I feel like I enjoy things more because I sometimes see things like two, three months in advance. Like there's not even a trailer out. So you go in super fresh. I kind of yeah. like that. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, yeah. I didn't know much about it. I didn't even know you were in the movie. I put the, <laughs> I put surprise. The movie. It literally was a surprise. And That's then funny. you were tagged on something that someone said you were in it afterwards. Yeah. And I was like, I'm surprised I have, because I have you on social media. I'm surprised, like, I haven't seen, I didn't see a posting before that. You know what I mean? Yeah. Well, you know, we weren't always allowed to until we knew when, when it was coming out and stuff. You, you know me, I was every But there was week. some stuff in your stories and I was kind of like, man, like I didn't clue in, but like, I literally watched a movie and I'm like, Jess Reynolds. Like what? <laughs> oh my gosh. So you got to see the whole thing. Yes. Oh, wow. I haven't even seen the whole thing yet. I, well, I've seen it. <laughs> and so what, am I good in it? Yes, you were great. <laughs> well, the, well, that's why you're here. <laughs> <laughs> oh great! Okay, <laughs> cut that out. Cut that out. <laughs> no, it's just it, it, it's it's the, you, so your character obviously you know is Gage. kind of in the thick of things, right? There's a lot kind yeah. of going on. There, there's an obsession going on, yeah. possibly death involved. We're not sure. A <laughs> little bit, a little bit. But, but like, so what's that role? What's that like for you playing a role where you're not like the main conflict, like the two people involved, but you're kind of like thrown in the middle of it like what's that like for you oh it was so much fun because i'm uh like the comic relief right i'm the gay best friend so it's a thriller it's a serious movie but like there's definitely moments of comedy and moments of uh you know sassiness and my character is one that gets to deliver most of those so on set a lot of people were very jealous like holland several times is like why does jesse get all the funny lines because i'm the funny character (laughs) because that's You get to, oh, I almost spoiled something. <laughs> well, you get to be crazy. Yeah, right. Possibly. You said it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah you said it, not me. <laughs> <laughs> Holland's the killer, okay? Holland. <laughs> well, I mean, it's out, it, it's out as of today in the States. Um, yeah, spoiler which, alert. Which is which is amazing. I mean, you got to work with Stefan on this as well. You know, <sighs> yeah. Canadian icon. I mean, Degrassi. I mean, come on. Snake. Snake, are you kidding? Snake. <laughs> Oh my gosh, what an honor. And, uh, you know, when he came up to me when we wrapped and was like, he put his hands on my shoulder and he was like, man, you're a star. That's the best compliment he I could have ever got. He commented on your Instagram too. He's like, you're very good at it. I was like, oh, I knew. Really? <laughs> so I was really glad that I impressed him so much. But I, honestly, PD, I had the time of my life. Like I'd never worked on a project with that budget or that size. So mm-hmm. it was just incredible being a thriller, getting to do fun stuff. Like, I don't want to give too much away, but like the scenes where I may or may not get killed. Uh, were really fun to shoot, and uh, there's more than one of them. Figure that out, but 
it was a lot of fun. A hundred percent. I can't even imagine the people that like do interviews in advance about Scream, where like there's always like that one or two pe- like cast yeah. members that don't die, but everyone else dies, so they're literally like, yeah, if I die or not, which is like <laughs> can go either way at this point. Like, <laughs> well, I know, it, like I posted a, a trailer and I said I'm ready to do the sequel, and someone's like, great, now I know you don't die. Send, and I'm like, well, flashbacks. you never know. Flashbacks. Or I could be a ghost. It's a horror. Like, you don't know. <laughs> or you're not dead. Like, it's <laughs> or like... I'm not dead. <laughs> <laughs> Only one way to find out. Watch it on Tubi. Um, That's right. Digital age, so many kind of amazing platforms. I mean, one of my favorite kind of things about this age is the access of content and the, the amount of many streaming services. Tubi is a new one. Tubi's rocking right now. What's it like to be part of kind of Tubi right now where there's a lot of momentum going on? Oh, I am so thrilled because let me just tell you, and I don't want to date myself here, but when I first booked this and I found out it was on Tubi, I hadn't heard of Tubi. Tubi's huge in the States right now and it's making waves in Canada, but I was like, oh great, what's this platform? But then I searched for it on my TV. It's already installed on my TV. It's free. It is. You know, everybody can access it. And uh, I recently wrapped another movie called Road Trip Romance. It's out on Hallmark. And a lot of people were like, oh, I can't see it. I don't have cable. So I was like, what the hell? And now streaming free everybody can access it which is part of the it's that's just so awesome so you auditioned for obsessed to death yes i did and did you audit did you like did you audit like did you audition for that character yeah oh yeah okay so you went in with that character for that audition for that character does it ever happen some because like i hear all the time it's like you're the first one that I've interviewed for a while where they go, they audition for the character to get it. Everyone else is like, actually, I didn't audition for this character. I auditioned for another character. Yeah, I mean, well, I mean, Petey, you know me kind of, and uh, this character isn't exactly a stretch. So I think that helped, you know, he, uh, he's just like me on steroids and maybe with better abs. But uh, yeah, no, it was, uh, you do so many auditions as an actor, particularly in Canada that you're grateful for each and every one, but it's almost just like throwing things at the wall. I love how you, you just, I love how you, I love how you just nonchalant. I love how you just effortlessly nonchalantly in Canada. <laughs> well, I mean, oh my God, uh, we're being real, aren't we? <laughs> like, you said that with like, no breath. You said that like that was well done. That was, yeah. <laughs> well, it's in the business, man. And uh, yeah, so I, I mean, this one, I had my fingers crossed because I knew how well I could play this character. And uh, I'm glad Stefan and, and Smith Castings thought so too. Oh, absolutely. What is your favorite thing about being a storyteller? Is there anything Ooh. that you like the most about it? You know, obviously, I like connecting with people. And when you, when you realize that you've made an impact or somebody uh, appreciates what you've told them or even if you can move somebody even better, whether that's through laughter or make them cry in a good way. Mm -hmm. It's just, uh, I don't know. I don't know if I can articulate why that brings me joy or why that's my passion, but it's definitely connecting with people and um, just bringing stories to life. And I'm grateful that I seem to have a talent for that, whether it's on the radio or on stage or yeah, make people in this laugh. Movie. Yeah, I, I wrote in this movie on Tubi. Watch it now. Um, That's right. <laughs> basically, so I always ask that question, and it's it's literally just kind of like a 50-50 at this point. Like you gave a great answer. Sometimes yeah. you have people that are just like, it's fun. <laughs> and I'm just like, well, that was like uh, yeah, yeah, I agree. But like you give me more. <laughs> what do you want us to say? We don't care about storytelling. I just want to be famous. Come on. I just need some to be rich. People, it's crazy because some people, you know, a lot of times, sometimes I send questions in advance uh, to yeah. the guest, right? <laughs> I didn't send you questions in advance. No. So we're just winging it. But sometimes I'll put that in. But sometimes I won't. And I'll ask the storytelling question. And, like, people have it, like, ready to go. Like, they know. It's like almost like they knew I was going to ask it. Maybe they watched my interviews. <laughs> you right? Well, I like that you call it storytelling because uh, that kind of crosses all the genres, right? And yeah. if you're somebody like myself that works in different medium or you, yep. you know, yep. it, storytelling is really what we do. Do you think people know, like, do people, do you think, because it's interesting for me, because we're also in media and, you know, you do stand-up comedy as well, you radio. Do you think people officially understand the grind and the hustle? Uh, that's because it's question. on, it's on, it's it's on people's radars more because of social media, right? People pe- uh, yeah. post and tweet like, "Oh my god, like long day at work" and like all that stuff. And like, I think it's split. I yeah. think it's very split. I think when you get a big win like this movie, 
people are like, oh crap, like that must have been tough to land that. And then you kind of earn their respect yep. when they see the size of the project you're able to secure. But day to day, I think that it's it's split. Like some people respect it and they know the hustle it takes and others kind of think, and eh, anybody could do that. Or yeah. uh, he's just telling, he's talking about the Kardashians on the radio. Yeah, well, you wake up at 3.30 in the morning every day and, and see what Kim Kardashian had for lunch. It's not always easy or fun. No, <laughs> it, it, but it's, the the three thirty a.m. I feel like is the biggest like you, they, I don't think people understand you know when like the like the six a.m. guy on the air yeah. is not just showing up at like five fifty five you know no, what I mean we've got to <laughs> figure out what we're going to talk about yeah and uh, thankfully I have a co-host Monica who's great and uh, I've always been on a multi person show yeah. so uh, I don't know what it's like to prep by yourself so I I value having somebody to bounce it off of. Well, it's just you like at like 3.30 a.m. Just like, what yeah. am I going to talk about? What am I doing? <laughs> yeah, but that is brutal. Like, it's almost my bedtime. So apologize if I look puffy. I'm trying to hold it together for you. <laughs> no, I, well, absolutely. No, this is this is great. And uh, a couple more questions quickly. I do have a question to ask about stand-up comedy. And I've been giving you, I've been, I've been throwing some easy ones at you. I mean, this is not really a crazy question, but it's just stand-up comedy is hard. And one can make it an is. argument that like it's it's getting harder and harder and harder. You know what I mean? What is your yeah. what's anything you want to say about the current kind of state of stand up comedy and everything? Well, it's scary. I don't want to get slapped. How about yeah. that? Oh yeah, it's true. Uh, yeah. You know <laughs> what? I I mean, it is frightening that like the whole cancel culture thing. I mean, I think I want to say that we're kind of getting out of that now. In that people, but I feel like going... stand up comedy. Sorry to interrupt. I feel like they were always walking on eggshells. To be honest with you. Yeah, I mean, to the greater public, the, yes. what I was going to say is like people who are coming to the show usually want to be there. So yes. you don't really get into trouble with live shows. I think it's more uh, specials or tweets or things like that. Yep. But um, my process is very different. Like what I was saying at the beginning, I really do see myself as an actor pretending to be a stand up comedian mm -hmm. because I'm a performer. I'm an entertainer. I'm not really a writer. Mm -hmm. So it took me so long to get into stand up because I was like, well, I can't write jokes. I'm an actor. I read other people's words and I can bring them to life, but I can't write my own. So it took me a long time to accept that. You know what? Maybe I can. So I say all that to say that I have my set material. I have probably an hour, which is great, but that's it. So some guys or girls will get up there and they have different stuff each time. Yeah. Mine very much is like a monologue. And depending on the event, I'll pick and choose which jokes I'm doing. But I know what jokes I'm doing. It's a cohesive set. I don't stray from it. So in that way, it is a lot like acting. Like That's theater. very interesting. Yeah, I feel like I sometimes have stand-up comics on. And by the way, like having stand-up comics, sometimes it is like you don't know sometimes. Like they, they're sometimes they're hard interviews. I'm gonna be honest with you because you'll like talk about something and they just go on like a tangent or like they start asking me questions. And like yeah. heckling me almost. And it's just like, oh my, oh my goodness. You know what I mean? But like everyone says like for like, people think that it's a lot of like winging it and a lot of improv. Like people don't think, like people don't think like what you just said, like they don't think that that's, because I've heard a lot of people say that that's their process. Oh yeah? Yeah, I have. It depends. Like some, some do just like, oh my gosh, there's so many, like I'm trying to think of their name right now. Oh, it's escaping me. It's going to drive me nuts. Uh, there's some guys that don't prepare a single word and they just go up there and do crowd work the whole time and kill for an hour and that just frightens the hell out of me i'll wing it a little bit like when you're hey how's you doing what anyone on a date you know all that <laughs> stuff that's that's in that's improv but uh you know you have your little tags ready to go if you know somebody says something sassy but uh yeah no i'm very impressed with the guys that can just get up there and go mike dambra thank you came to me mike yes. dambra great comedian you know him yeah absolutely all he does is crowd work there's a few, there were a few others like that that do a lot of crowd work. Um, and then sometimes it will like come up on, on like, like TikTok. Yeah. When you follow one comedian, it's over, yeah. right? <laughs> yeah. Right. Yeah. For your, for your That's page. interesting. You say that they're tough interviews too. Cause I know some of them are very depressed. Some of us are very opposite from what we do on well, stage. <laughs> well, I have one time. So I interviewed a comedian yeah. that <laughs> I asked him about like heckling. And I guess it was like at the time where like it was still a pandemic, but like there were like shows were happening. Okay. So I asked him about like heckling and he just lost it because the night before he like got heckled by someone and like it wasn't good and anything. And he just went on like a, he just like got really upset about it. And oh it God. happened like the night. So we did the interview. It'd be like, I asked you about heckling. And you're like, well, Petey, you know, last night I did a show. And the guy just ruined everything. And I was just like, oh my God. So and then I, who I, was it? Who was it, Petey? 
Tell me after. Yeah, I will tell you after. <laughs> um, no, actually, you know what? It's not. It's not even. It was Brett. Brett Ernst, who's in Cobra oh, okay. Kai. Yeah, it yeah was Brett okay. Ernst. No, I, it's true. I said it like it was a secret. It's not a secret. Like it's on the one. We could go watch the interview. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> okay. Um, but yeah, but no, I, you was, know what? I don't get heckled nearly enough. I would. I like getting heckled because I have a list of things that I <laughs> I want to say like. Like, you know, I was going to do my impression of a jackass, but this guy beat me to it. Ha, 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 ha. You know? That was the greatest thing that's ever happened. I might, I might, I might clip that. I have a list. I have a list. I do. I have canned responses for everything. And that's what I say. I didn't even see. You just said, because like, you don't see the piece of paper. You're just like, I have a list. Are you I've got a- tons of lists. I got lists about the grocery store. I got lists what I got to do with my dog. I got lists. It's so crazy. Jesse, this was so much fun chatting with you. I can't believe we finally did this. Like I know. It's crazy. I can't wait until we work on something together because I think you and I would have a lot of crazy ideas. Absolutely. And I can't wait. Thank you so much again. And uh, on Tubi, Obsessed to Death, yourself, Thank you. Holland Roden. Um, and uh, they can check that on Tubi. Instagram, they can f- keep up to date with you on Instagram, right? Absolutely, yeah. The trailer's out there now. I posted it this morning, so please watch the trailer. I'm very proud of it. Absolutely. Well, it's been Pop Turn of YouTube.com slash Pop Turn for previous episodes. Obsessed to Death on Tubi now. Until next time, it's Jesse Reynolds and Petey Beats signing off. Thank you for tuning in to Pop Turnative. Make sure to check out our past episodes of Pop Turnative on YouTube. Be sure to like Pop Turnative on Facebook and follow us on Twitter. This has been an Autograph Communications production.